My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. I should have let that run. I'm I'm going head on against all the bikers again, and it's just too cool looking. Uh, CiottiFPV.com if you want to support me. This is totally crowdfunded. I love you guys. You're the best. Uh, that was some Insta360 Go um, flat color profile footage. That's why it's, yeah, not saturated at all. Uh, flight footage from the Sunny King Criterium uh, USA cycling race on Saturday. And, uh, and then on Sunday, I actually filmed a wedding as well. So this was a crazy weekend. I missed you guys yesterday, but I was out twerking, yo, uh, making some art. So they say, and, uh, yeah, it was great. It was, it was awesome. The, um, the cycling race was, you know, th this is the third one that I've done in a row. And, um, much of the same to be honest which is a good thing um it, you know like no surprises no no bad shit uh i don't know what it's same thing as the last couple of years it was it was a blast everybody was mind was completely blown all the people in the tv truck were like holy hell how does this guy do this what is what what do you eat for breakfast who are you what the hell um yeah it was awesome. Uh, a couple of guys were a couple of guys that were actually local in Al Al Alabama that are in the the video production world uh, were like, dude, yeah, man. I, I any anytime anybody talks to me about drones, I always bring you up. Like I, I end up talking about you all the time. It's it's amazing what you do. Um, super kind, awesome people. Um, and yeah, I, I just had an absolute blast. It's super, super, super fun. Uh, all of that flight footage was from this one, which is the AOS Cine 25. Uh, this is the guy that I fly the most at those events because it's a little bit more efficient, um, mainly because the entire outside of the um, uh, the the propeller blade here is is unobstructed. There's no carbon fiber struts whatsoever out here uh because of that though this is super fragile so i figure fly this thing god forbid i crash it and break it qavs goes up in the air which is a little bit less efficient i believe because it's got a support out here 
this support is why it's so strong. If I crash this and blow it up and I put this up in the air, if I crash this, which I have a couple of times, it's not going to explode like the AOS. Um, so, yeah, if I flew this all the time, I would never fly this because, yeah, if I crash this, it's it's this is incredibly strong. Like when you take this thing from the corners like this and try to bend it, it's like a brick. Whereas if if I were to actually put some force into this, I would snap this duct right off. I um, I broke the uh, the bottom plate of this on the very first crash into the grass when I was first building this and tuning it from about five feet up. Um, replaced it. Luckily, I'd, I'd bought an extra top and bottom plate. Uh, I replaced it, and then on the second crash from like eight feet up into the grass again, it broke both the bottom and the top plate. Um, this was last year when I was first building these two things. These are my sub 250 gram live streaming rigs. Um, companies hired me come hire me to come out and fly live if they have a live stream going and they want drone footage that they can pipe into the TV truck and then switch in and out of. Um, and they work phenomenal. I, I've 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 given a lot of thought to what the best setup would be to do this and comply with the FAA's. The main rule is that there can't be any externally spinning objects that could cause lacerations, um, and these are really the, the best way that I've figured out how to do that. Um, I would love it if there was something even better than these because these are only two and a half inch propellers. Um, I would love to be able to have a three inch rig to do this for the better efficiency and more power, but there's just really no way to keep those under uh, 250 grams. Um, the other way that I've looked at quite a bit to do this is with the, the pusher style rigs, the Fox whoops, the Cinelogs. Um, what I don't like about those is that they use a, uh, an AIO. Uh, both of these guys use 20 by 20 stacks and I'm just way more comfortable with a proper 20 by 20 stack when flying it around people. Um, at these cycling races, I'm usually chasing the leaders. Um, and like those bicycles that they ride have really skinny tires and they're really 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 lightweight like they, they they make those bikes so light that they're like about to break at any given time um so like if i go down when i'm chasing the leader with one of these and one of the other riders runs this over i'm not convinced that they won't go over the handlebars even if they don't go over the handlebars those guys are like shoulder to shoulder so if somebody sees it go down and swerves a little bit, he's going into somebody else. And if that's the, that, that, so it's called the, the Peloton is the word that they use for the big group of riders. Um, if somebody goes down in the front of the Peloton, that was, you were looking at a hundred men's uh, cyclists at, at this recent event. So like, yeah, you're looking at the potential of like 20, 30, 40 people going over the handlebars. And like for some of these guys, this is their career and they get hurt when they crash. So like, God forbid, like, I'm, look, I'm not going to be the person that causes somebody to break an ankle or something like that. And it ruins their, their job for the next, you know, year or, or maybe indefinitely. Right. Like when, when people are at the top of their game, if they get seriously injured, that's sometimes it for them. And I, I'm just, I'm not going to be that guy. So uh, I do, I, I'm really, really, really sensitive to um, keeping these things as safe as possible and flying as safe as possible, right? Like I, I there, there's a lot of stuff that I would, I would love to do. Like I, I particularly, like I would love to be chasing these guys and like throw it up over them and then drop it down in front of them. But like, look, it's, it's not about me. It's, it's about them. And like, I'm not there to show off as a pilot. Um, I'm there to give the director what the director wants and to show the competitors in a way that the static cameras kind of can't. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, the, uh, in very sad news today. Um, so that event is called the Sunny King Criterium. Uh, and it's, it used to be put on by ACC, America Criterium Cup. Uh, I don't know what happened to ACC, but the the organization that now put on that event is called uh, USC, United States Cycling, I believe it is. 
There was also NCL, the National Cycling League. Um, that is the organization that flew me down to Miami Beach last year, Denver. Um, I think Salt Lake City, Utah was under ACC. Uh, but yeah, Miami Beach and Denver. Yeah, yeah, Miami Beach and Denver. And then they also did an event here in Atlanta, but they did it right at the foot of the airport, so I couldn't fly. Um, NCL announced today that they're canceling their entire season this year, um, which really, really sucks. I was really looking forward to doing um, Miami Beach and Denver again. Um, Maggie was going to come with me to Miami Beach. We were going to make like a whole thing out of it. Um, I was super, 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 super excited about that. So I am really bummed out by that. And I had to do my taxes today. So today's sucked. Um, but yeah, that blows. Um, and it's the, the word around the sort of campfire in the cycling community is this is kind of it for NCL. Like they've said that, you know, they'll come back stronger and better in 2025. But like, how do you do that? You know, how do you cancel? How do you, how do you cancel your entire second season of your existence and then come back, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's, um, I think the NCL is no more. So that really sucks, man, because that, I, I, I yeah, those events are incredibly fun. And quite honestly, I make good money from them. So um, that sucks in a lot of different ways. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. There we go. Sorry, friends. Microphone is too far away. You couldn't hear me. Nobody said nothing. I wouldn't have known if you'd said anything because I haven't been reading the chat. Timmons is first. Steven Woodruff is next. Some guy FPV. Denzel, a terrible, not applicable. Fitties 135. David 4F. Tongue out FPV. Northern Tier. Doubles FPV. Bob Bruce. Matt Norton. Steven Woodruff. Safe Zone FPV. FPV Toast. Jade Deeg. Stavel. Hockey Rounds. Ethan W. Cloud Hopper. Four Little Pigs. Beef FPV. Scotty Scott. Parkour Guy. Douglas Otwell. Sleepy CBR. Jeremy O. Uh, just Jeremy O. Parkour Guy, Wake and Bay, Q Silver, FPV, Nathan Otis, Bo Weber, Metal Dirtskin, Kilo Zebra, Dead Chicken, uh, Denzel the Terrible Layman Board, Brian Chambers, Quadum, Hat Trick, Curtis Hayes, Metal Dirtskin. I'm going to leave it there. If you want the gangliest of ganglies to read your name, you got to come into the chat early. If you want to talk to me, type Ciotti FPV in your message. It'll light up an orange. You can do that with each other. If you want to get Stavel's attention in your message, type Stavel. And for him... His name will light up on orange. So that's how you do it for me as well. Uh, you can also do a super chat if you want to support this completely crowdfunded thing that I've got going on. It's tough to do FPV full time. Um, I would love your support. Uh, join the Patreon. That's the way that you can get the most benefits and support me um, with the evil overlords that run these companies taking the least percentage. Um, there's an Etsy store where you can buy some fun stuff. There's a whole bunch of affiliate links. It's all over on CiatiFPV.com. Help me help you, my friends. Cool. Uh, the wedding on Sunday was great. Cine whooped it. Uh, weddings are interesting. It's 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 not a great scenario for FPV. Um, the one of the bridesmaids is the editor of uh, the fella that hired me to fly Pride and uh, the Lululemon event le the previous weekend and another um, uh, foot race. And so in this case, like, it's different because, you know, she's one of the bridesmaids. She can explain to everybody involved what FPV is, and it's a little noisy, but it's going to it's gonna be okay, and I'm not going to smash into anybody's face and yada, yada, yada. Uh I would not recommend that you try to book wedding gigs, though. Uh, if nothing else, because weddings, wedding gigs suck, top to bottom. They're, it's, it's too high pressure. Um, there's a mega chance of Bridezilla or um, wedding coordinator Zilla. Um, yeah, just don't have anything to do with weddings unless you absolutely have to in general, <laughs> as a general life rule. Um, so yeah, I don't recommend that, that you try to squeeze FPV into weddings, even though there is, you know, like for photography, for example, weddings are the way that you make good money, um, cause people spend tons of money on their weddings. Uh, but yeah, it's just not a scenario that's great for FPV. There's too many people walking around. Um, you can't like really announce to everyone like, Hey, this is what FPV is. Don't look right at it. Um, act natural. Don't reach your fingers into it. There's little kids running around. Um, 
yeah, so it's it's super sketchy. If if you're going to fly a wedding, please uh, be like super over prepared, top to bottom, including how good you are as a pilot. I know that sounds shitty for me to say, but like I'm just being honest here. It, it's a scenario where if something goes wrong, the stakes are really high, um, and it's the scenario where a lot can go wrong really quickly because of everything that I just mentioned. So like. If you even remotely think if, if you get the opportunity to fly a wedding and you and there's like a 0.01% chance that you're like, shit, man, am I good enough? Turn down the job so, again. Sorry if that sounds like me being a prick, but um, you don't want you don't want the wedding heat. <laughs> Believe me, um, it's just not. Yeah, it's it's just not a good thing. Say no. You. Yeah, it's. Uh, but all that being said. Weddings are gorgeous and and you don't have to work all that hard. Like you just sort of point the camera at the the beautiful room that they've set up to have dinner in at the beautiful um, pagoda that they have set up to do the um, to do the uh, ceremony in typically. And yeah, it just looks awesome. And uh, this was one of those. It was uh, I did not have to work very hard. Uh, the, the hard work that I had to do was trying to predict what little kids would just go running at the drone and rah, reaching their fingers towards the damn thing, um, and stuff like that. So, but yeah, that was really fun. I, I had a blast doing that. Uh, this would be the third, I think, wedding that I did. Uh, the first one that I did was the one for Bravo TV for the TV show, uh, Family Karma. And then... Uh, I did another one uh, for just a random client uh, late last year, I guess it was. And then, yeah, this one. So, yeah, that was my Sunday. Uh, got a little bit more sunburn, but it actually doesn't look too bad. I got nailed on Saturday. Uh, I think that's all I really have to say about these, unless you guys have some questions. Eventually, I'll let, let me get a little bit caught up on chat here. Stephen Woodruff says, I bought a pack of BT 2.0 leads only to find that they come with 22 AWG wire. I also got an A30 connector with 20 AWG wire. I can't believe the difference two wire gauges made. I've not really paid much attention to wire gauges on Tiny Whoops. That's interesting. I'm going to pay a little bit more attention now. Stavel says, greetings, uh, <laughs> TSA. Parkour guy says, inside joke from Joshua's live stream. Uh, parkour guy says, yo, he also says, these streams always help me get through my forklifting job, and I learned so much from them. Keep it up, my dude. Thank you, man. Don't stab anything with that forklift. Or do stab something, but get it on video, because that's gnarly. Layman Board says, what's up? Hat Trick says, message you on Discord. Sent you the link for the God analog video. Same question. How, how, how was it done? Um, it's it's upscaling. It, it's it's that there's uh, Mo FPV has been talking about it a good amount. So hop over to his channel. You'll see it looks exactly like it. it there's there's some fancy program that does AI based upscaling. Um, and yeah, it makes analog video look exactly like what that was. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Whoever that is posting the video is making a big deal out of some magical camera. That's bullshit. That's that's not a magical camera. That's that's. I'm almost sure that that is AI upscaling. If you watch uh, Mo FPV's stuff with the AI upscaling in it, you'll see it looks exactly like it. Curtis Hayes says now we need CI FPV to do Sicilian impressions. Uh, Metal Ritson says it's ironic you said you're revamping video descriptions. Uh, I'm now seeing a YouTube redesign uh, where I can't see them at all. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Maybe I won't waste my time. <laughs> What's up, Carbon Cage? How are you? Big and little. Uh, Stephen Woodruff says, are there any onboard analog DVR systems? Uh, there used to be, but it was an entire 20 by 20 board. So it was kind of heavy. And then like you got to find space for it. And it's just like to hell with it. Um, so yeah, I don't think anybody makes them anymore. But uh, Runcam used to make one. And I want to say Isheen used to make one as well. The Isheen one was not drilled for any kind of mounting, so you would just VHB it. I, I did that for a while on some micro at some point, but yeah. Stryker says, how you doing? I'm great. Uh, CMYK says, evening, gangly gang, and CIDFPV. Jeremy Overreach is how I want to say it. Uh, Overesh, I think it is. Uh, says, I have the V3 Mobula 6 HD0. Okay. 
uh, with serial earlocks. Would you recommend upgrading the motors from the 19,000 kV to the new 28,000 kV? Uh, I'd get the 2024 edition, but they're sold out everywhere. Uh, yeah, Jeremy, absolutely. Uh, with with tiny whoops, especially with 65 millimeter tiny whoop, 65 millimeter motor to motor tiny whoops, which is a 1.2 inch propeller, kV is everything. Uh, the most kV you can possibly get is, is, in my opinion, what you want. Um, I'm a huge fan of 32,000 and 36,000 kV. Uh, I believe that they are both sold out, though, over on tinywhoop.com. So look around and just basically get the highest KV 0702s that you can find. The The new 28,000 KV Happy Model 0702s are fantastic. But you might, over on tinywhoop.com, you might be able to find an 0702 30,000 KV in stock. If so, get that. It's made by Happy Model anyway. Um, check for their 32,000s. If they're in stock, get them. Check for their 36,000s. If they're in stock, get them. I'm pretty sure they're not in stock. Um, so yeah, just get as high as high of a KV as you possibly can. If it's too high of a KV, you can motor limit it down in beta flight. If you buy too low of a KV, you can't motor motor limit up in beta flight. So you always want to go higher rather than lower. Uh, Cisco FPV says, last time you were saying you couldn't remove the Walksnail OSD. If you go into the menu and turn off the goggle icon, uh, it goes away. Um, God, God, like it, it doesn't, it doesn't get rid of all of it. I don't think if you go into the menu and turn off the goggle icon, it goes away. Turn off the, oh, okay. I, th I think I know what you mean. Uh, we're going to be flying walk snail today. So I will do that. And then I will output from these and we will see uh, if it does in fact go away. Um, even if I can get it to, I, I would love to get it to go away just in general, but, uh, even if I can get it to go away, uh, I don't know if I would, I don't know if I would trust walk snail, um, goggle icon show hide. Well, that certainly looks like it gets rid of all the OSD. The hell? All right, so we'll try that. I have it turned off. We will try that. I would like to do that uh, for the um, for when I output video to the screens at the place that has the RC drifting. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, good call, dude. Thank you for that. Uh, Ethan W says, finish the big motor tooth fairy two three and a half inch with walk snail. Uh, it's so peppy, even with a big 6S and 3-inch props. I posted some pictures of the micro drone tab on Discord if you want to see. Uh, yeah, friends, 3-inch props, man. You don't need 3.5. 3.5-inch rigs, like, unless you're up at, like, 350 grams, they're too floaty. Uh, do 3-inch. Three 3-inch three is better. Uh, QSilver FPV Media says, can anyone join the bike race? Um, I assume so, but, I mean, th those are, like, world-class athletes that you're looking at. Like, a lot of those guys, like, that's their career. They're, they're, um, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, anybody can, can probably join. I, I, I have no idea how it works. I, I, I'm, I've gotten a little bit interested in, in the cycling stuff after being in their world a little bit, doing a bunch of events two years ago last year. Um, but... Yeah, I, 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 I don't know that much. Uh, I would search, I would Google search uh, American Criterium Cup or uh, U.S. Cycling. And uh, yeah, I'm sure it won't take too long to find it on the Google machine. Uh, Striker says, there are no motors that are good for three and a half inch anymore except for the Brother Hobby 1504.5, which has ass durability and Xnova 1804, which are probably going to be discontinued soon. Um I don't know about that. There's also a T motor 1604 and a T motor 1804. Uh, there is the FPV cycle 16 millimeter motor, which is really notchy, but it's it's a big power motor. Um, there's another 1504. I think there's even a 1505. I, lately, I've been kind of thinking that there's an awful lot of motors that that sort of work for 3.5 inch. To be totally honest. Um, and I've been kind of wanting more motors th that are better suited for three inch. Although you can use most of those motors for three inch. So it's, yeah, I don't know. 
Uh, Striker says, uh, why I'm switching 3-inch to 3.5 T-motor, 1404, 4600, or such an insane motor is, too. Uh, the, that T-motor 1404 is is one of my favorite micro motors of all time. Uh, those are actually what are on both of these rigs. And, yeah, I mean, so the, uh, the one thing I did forget to talk about uh, with Saturday is that the wind was nuts. Like, I swear to God, dude, they hold these events at places that are windy as hell just to screw with me. There must have been like 30 miles an hour of wind at one point. Like I, I the the bikers cruise the the sorry, the cyclists cruise at about 25 to 35 miles an hour and then they can sprint up to like 40 or 45. Um and they'll do like little mini sprints to as a part of their kind of strategy and whatnot. Um, there is a lot of strategy in, in cycle racing because when they draft each other, they use like 30% less energy and, and the meta is conserving energy because these races are like 45 minutes or 60 minutes long. Um, and so it's a really, really, really big deal. Um, and there were points where the wind would kick up. And I would be chasing them and it would just like <laughs> I would just like almost stop. And I would and like a couple times it happened when I was live, I would have to like kind of cover it up and and just nose down and, and kind of drop altitude and surf into it. But man, the wind was nuts. Um, and then like Denver at like 8000 feet above sea level, um, the air is really thin but man, these T-Motor 1404s on frames that are like not aerodynamic, right? Like it looks aerodynamic when you look at it like this, but this is when it's hovering. I'm flying this thing up like this and look at all that surface area, right? So like the the T-Motor 1404s, man, they just jam. They're, they're a really, really, really impressive motor. All that being said, I was also really impressed in the two batteries that I got with it. Um, with the Raxus build, which is on Lumineer, another big boy, three and a half inch or three inch motor, Lumineer uh, Cinema 1504 motors. Um, I was actually really, really, really impressed by those. I'm looking forward to getting that rig rebuilt. I think I'm going to get a Speedy B stack. I think I'm going to get the 20 by 20 Speedy B stack for it because it's really cheap. And everybody see. Everybody seems to be having really good luck with them not exploding, and that's what I really care about. So, um, yeah, I, I was gonna get the T motor twenty by twenty stack, but then I heard a couple people mentioning that they they're not having luck with those anymore, and they're they're blowing up on them. Um, so yeah, I mean, are the Speedy B twenty by twenty stacks still like are are they still amazing? It, uh, initially, I was just like, no, nah, there's no way, there's no way that a stack that cheap is gonna be decent. Stay away from them. But then, like, more and more and more, people were like, yo, this is absurd. This, this stack just won't die. And I was expecting at some point there'd be a ton of people like, hey, they finally all are blowing up. Um, but that day has not come. So, like, what's the deal? What have you guys heard? Have, it, I, I've yet to hear more than a couple of people say that they've blown them up. Um, I know a lot of people have the 30 by 30s. I need to know about the 20 by 20s. So anybody that has specific actual info on the 20 by 20s being durable, please let me know in the chat. Tag me in the chat. See, type C I D F P V. Scrolling back up in the chat to get caught up. YouTube did the thing. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, where the hell was I? Where was I? There we go. Uh, Striker says, off topic, but, off topic, but you, have you ever been to the Florida Keys, Seattle, uh Pretty nice place down here. I think I have. I've been to Florida a bunch. Uh, my parents used to bring me down there to Disney World all the time. Disneyland, Disney World, whatever the Disney is down there. Uh, I've been to Universal Studios down there. And uh, more recently, uh, my parents take five or six months when it's cold in New Jersey and they drive their amazing RV down to Florida, among other places. Uh, but they spend most of their time in Florida and um, they'll invite me and Maggie um, most years to come down and hang out with them. So I, I'm in Florida a bit. I, I don't, I don't know if I've ever been to the keys, but yeah, Florida's very nice. It, it, unfortunately, there's a lot of dumbasses in it, but in <laughs> that live there, but 
uh, if you can avoid them, it's a it's a great place to hang out. Other than the scorching heat and alligators and mosquitoes. Kilo Zebra says, uh, "I know you don't have any special info, but have you heard anything about the high KVO seven hundred two availability? Nothing whatsoever. We bleed and tiny whoop sites have been out of stock for a while. Anything over twenty eight thousand five hundred? Uh, none whatsoever. It, it, I, I yeah, I I'm not a, a a big enough content creator to to have anybody tell me anything ahead of time." Um, even if they did, I wouldn't be able to say anything. So yeah. 661 says, uh, did you catch the book? B-O-Q-U-E. What's B-O-Q-U-E? Bouquet? Oh, at the wedding. No, I didn't stay that long. Uh, I got in and out. I I was in and out of there within two hours. Um, Stephen Woodruff says, when were 16 by 16 stacks used? While ago, but I, I, you can probably still find them. Uh, I want to make a tiny toothpick. I don't know if it's viable uh, if all the tech is old. Yeah, they're mo- most of them are older. The, the other problem is is none of them are um, none of them are were uh, durable. They they were all kind of a mess, and they were a fucking nightmare to work on. Like you think twenty by twenty and thirty gauge wires is a pain in the ass. Sixteen by sixteen shit sucked. Um, I did two builds with sixteen by sixteen stacks. One of them got run over by a car on the Maiden. Um, both of them sucked. The The build was awful. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would not I would not go down that road. AIO is plus. I think a 16 by 16 stack is going to weigh more than a 25 by 25 AIO. So, yeah, just get an AIO. I can't believe I, those words just came out of my mouth, but. Parkour guy says, uh, "What would you recommend for ultra durable warehouse build over raw power or amazing flight characteristics such as open prop, cockroach frame in 65, uh, Bobito? Pfft, no, Firefly Nano? No, hell no. Uh, y- y- I mean durability with open propellers the, the, with, with a tiny whoop. Like they don't; those two things don't go together. You you got to have um, ducts. Uh, cockroach frame for sure. Cockroach 65 V3 frame." Um, you know, I, I just recently did the indestructible 65 millimeter build. Um, that's probably where I would go. Uh, go like two or three streams back and you can watch me build it and fly it and rip it around. That, that That's what I think I would do. Or just a Mobula 6 2024, to be honest. It's so lightweight, it's going to be incredibly durable. Um, the durability comes from... One of the ways you can get durability is to go really lightweight. Um, so yeah, that's the thing that the cockroach, that the, um, Mobula 6 2024 does really, really well. It's like 17 point something grams. You can pretty easily get it down to like 17, one, 17, two. Um, and yeah, they're, they're really, really durable. You will eventually bend the motor shafts, which is why I did the, the indestructible build, which has a one and a half mil shaft. Um, so yeah, check that stream out. We talked all about durability in there. Cloud hopper says, what's with all the shortages with all the whoop parts these days? Uh, it's not just whoop parts, it's it's FPV parts in general, right? Like these these manufacturers can make a lot more money with military contracts than with us little shitbirds. Um, and there's also massive chip shortages um, in in the computer world that we deal with. So yeah, it's it's not just tiny whoop parts. I mean, you know, it we're we're coming out of tiny whoop season, right? So the the winter every year is tiny whoop season because uh, nobody wants to go outside. And so, yeah, the, the demand skyrockets in October, November, December, January, February. Uh, now that it's getting nice outside, hopefully we'll see the parts come in stock a little bit and stay in stock a little bit better. CBFPV says... Nothing like drinking as soon as you're going to talk. Uh, are you using freestyle or ducted props for those builds? Uh, when you say those builds, what are those builds, CBFPV? Uh, tag me again. Ask me that whole question, but instead of saying those builds, say something else. Aver the Ham says, what's up? Hope you're well. I am. <laughs> Hope you are as well, brother. Liu uh, Root? I think that's Liu Root. FPV says... What video, uh, what video system do you use for live events, and how do you keep your range in check? Um, at the moment, I'm still using old school DJI, which I really, really do like. 
Um, most of these live streams go out in 720. This was the first uh, big cycling live stream that actually went out in 1080, uh, which is why they wanted me to, to try out 03. Unfortunately, the rig that I built for 03 caught on fire the day before the event. Um, so I ended up just flying the old school stuff. Um, what I like about the old school DJI system is how good it is in low light and that it just works. There's no bullshit. There's not a lot of settings. Um, it looks good enough that, you know, the, the flying that we're doing with these is the star of the show. The video quality is not the star of the show. When this thing is sitting six inches off the shoulder of a cyclist going 35, 40 miles an hour, and there's a big trail of them in front of him. Nobody's looking at the image and going, mm, well, it's a little, it's a little desaturated. The, the magentas are coming through a little too much. Ah! <laughs> I forgot to breathe there. <laughs> um, yeah, I like, the 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 feedback is holy all day long all day long people so they um all of the spectators get to see me fly too because they output the the live stream onto a massive monitor and all day long people that have seen it on the monitor that then hear me come into land come over and go dude holy shit that's you oh my god that's insane how do you do that is that vr how fast does it go how high does it go i'm gonna kill myself i should probably not sc scream that but um yeah not a single person complains about the quality uh that being said in the two batteries that i got before that raxus caught on fire I was really impressed by the O3 system and, and I'm kind of excited to get it going for um, whatever the next event is. Uh, if there is, I, I, I don't know. Um, with NCL uh, shutting down, canceling this season, I, this might be the only event that I get to fly this year. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully not. But um, yeah. So... Uh, that's what I use. And then, um, how do you keep your range in check? For me, the best way is just to like fly and pay attention to the pixelation. Like DJI, as it starts to get to the edge of its range, will start to get the, the pixels will get bigger and blockier. And then you'll start to lose frames as well. You can technically glance down at the megabits per second, but it's pretty obvious. Like it, it's pretty obvious on, on digital in general, when it's getting towards the end of its range, um, and at that point, it's just a quick thought process of like, am I behind a building? Is that what's doing it? And, you know, do I have the quad like rotated in a way where the antenna is? So th this one, the antenna is up loud and proud. So pretty much at any time, if I'm nose down, the antenna is the highest point. If I've flattened out for some reason, and I'm, if, if you guys are where I'm flying from, and if I've flattened out and I'm starting to back up like this and, and the head of the antenna, it has a bunch of carbon fiber between my goggles and the quad. It's th that's just like a quick thought process that I go through of like, where's my antenna um, on this rig? The antenna is not as high. So that's that's a thought process that happens a lot of like, am I too flat? Because, you know, as you can see, head of the antenna, now it's got it's gone behind the battery. So if I'm perfectly faced towards myself and hovering and, and I start to get pixelation, I just put the nose down and that, that puts the antenna back up with no garbage in between me and it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just, um, after you fly enough, um, after you fly enough and, and you push range enough, it's just kind of something that you don't even really think about. You just sort of do it. It's, it's just in the back of your head. When, when the video starts to block out, you, you really quickly troubleshoot it in your head. Am I too far? Am I behind a building? Is my antenna not clear? Or is my antenna being blocked by something on the quad? And you just kind of troubleshoot it real quick and, and usually it goes away. Uh, I've been flying an awful long time and I've been dealing with it for, yeah, ever. And so for me, it's super easy, but those are the those are the three main things that you want to work into your head and, and think about every single time um, that 
your video kind of goes to hell because that's that's sort of the quick troubleshoot that you need to do to kind of figure it out. Um, you know, the easy button when it happens is to put the nose down because if you have your, first of all, build your quads right, get your antenna at a 45 degree angle off the back up as high as you realistically can, right? That's the first big step. Putting your antenna inside here is the worst thing you can possibly do. You never want your, you want to get your antenna as far away from carbon fiber as possible. So that's the first big, big, big thing. But then the real easy button when you're flying is just to put the nose down. If the nose is already down, put it down more. It's going to get, if you've got the antenna where it should be, it's going to get the antenna more and more clear of your battery, of your carbon fiber, of everything. So that's the, the quickest thing you can do is just pitch forward. Um, but yeah, hopefully you're not pitching forward into a wall, or if you're behind a building, hopefully you're not pitching forward deeper behind that building, right? Um, so there does need to be like a quick troubleshoot that your brain goes through, but uh, just keep flying, keep paying attention to it, and eventually you won't even think about it. I'm going to put these back on the shelf where they belong. Uh, because, yeah, it's something that uh, as you fly more and more, You'll, you'll want to push the edge of, of range more and more. And, and so it's something that um, naturally, as you become a more seasoned pilot, it just becomes a, a, a thing. Uh, parkour guy says, 1605, oh my God, 3600 KV is amazing for 3.5 inch. It is indeed. Unfortunately, it's got the silly two bolt mounting, which I really don't like. Um, so I don't usually mention those motors. Um I've heard so many people complain about how uh, fragile those motors are, unfortunately. Stryker says, uh, I would have gotten the Pacer 1804 if I could find 4S KV. Don't they have a 3500 KV? Pacer 1804. Uh, 2400. Uh, yeah, they've got 3800 KV. 3800 KV is a four. Oh, that's the 1604. I thought they had a. Here we go. This is to their website. Oh, look at that. Yeah, to infinity. Okay. I was going to start bitching and moaning about their website. Uh, 3400 KV. Yeah, 3400 KV is a 4S KV. A um, little bit low for 4S, but if you pair it with a pitchy 3-inch or 3.5-inch prop, it'll make plenty of power. The X Nova 1804 is only 3500 KV. That 100 KV difference is small enough that it... it and the... The, the the KV that they stamp on these motors and the KV that the motors actually make are always different. So two motors that are 100 KV different, they might as well be the same KV because the, one might be high, the other one might be low. Um, it's just, yeah. Uh, Metal Ritson says the AMAX 1504, that was the one. I ordered some of those, still waiting on them from China. Let us know how they are. AMAX is a really interesting company. Really, really interesting um uh motor company uh q silver media says avada 2 avada 2 work better for the bike race job pros and cons uh the avada 2 would get me thrown in federal prison at the, for the bike race jobs uh it is way 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 over 250 grams um if there was no FAA or if the FAA got their head out of their ass about the 250 gram rule and made it a real number like 600 or 800, um, the Avada 2 would be, yeah, probably the best possible solution, mainly because it can look straight down, but also because of the runtime. Um, the problem with it would be the controller situation, right? Um, you can't get a good controller for it uh the controller options are not terrible but they're not good either uh but the fact that the damn thing can look straight down that would be a fucking game changer um they typically will bring me on for fpv and then they'll have another dji pilot there with a mavic um i don't know how the hell the mavic pilots justify taking a seven inch propped 600 700 800 gram rig up in the air over crowds of people but hey that ain't i'm playing by the rules you can do whatever the fuck you want bro good luck in federal prison 
I'm being, I, they won't actually put them in federal, federal, federal prison, but uh, the fines that, yeah, you guys know. Uh, so yeah, the, the Avada 2 would be absolute best case scenario. In theory, I don't know. The 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 DJI stuff still kind of worries me a little bit, but I'm incredibly and the the image quality of the Avada 2 is absolutely next level. It blows away any of the GoPros that are currently available. Um, so yeah, that would be wild, but it, it would be completely illegal. It, it would be total. Um, it would be a huge risk. You can and like you know with with something like that, you can't even like lie, right? Like I could technically take one of the cine whoops and put it up in the air all day long and like god forbid something happens just keep like a fucking tiny whoop one ass battery in my pocket and and if something happens just be like oh yeah this is the battery i was flying with it it's a seven gram battery and and that makes it 249.999 grams right like I, I could kind of get away with that with one of these like with an Avada, like there's nothing you could do. You can't do that. It, it is what it is. Like it's a pre-built rig, right? Um, there's you're you're in it. Like if if somebody takes a picture of the Avada flying, and then you get reported, and they send that picture in of you flying the Avada over a crowd, you're done. Uh, or if the live stream gets out there, right? Like any number of things could happen. So yeah, that 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 would be. Um, I'm not willing to do it. Stryker says, uh, I think the 16 millimeter FPV cycle has a little too high of a KV at 4,100. No such thing as too high of a KV. You just motor limit it down. Uh, and the T, uh, T-Motor 1804 has too low of a KV at 3,400. It feels like 3,400 is too low, but it's actually not, believe it or not. That's what the X-Novas are. The X-Novas are 3,500 KV and they rail. Um, 1604 is not bad. Indeed, it isn't. It's a great motor. Uh, mainly what I was considering at 3,800 KV. Um, you can't go wrong with any three of those motors. You'll be really happy with all three of those motors. The 1604 is probably your safest bet. The T-Motor 1804 will rail, but you'll have to put it on a high pitch propeller all the time, which is not bad. Uh, and then the FPV cycle is, is going to absolutely blast. That motor is going to make all the power in the world. The only worry is that it's so notchy that it might create jello or be hard to tune, but it's going to make so much power. It's also going to be a heavier motor. Um, but all three of those motors are, you will not be uh, disappointed with any of those motors. YouTube just did the thing, scrolling back up. There it is. CMYK says, my 20 by 20s are holding up wildly, trying to kill them lately. <laughs> well, that's what I keep hearing. I don't understand. They're so cheap. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with the Speedy B 20 by 20. Striker says, for 3 inch, what do you think is better, 1404 or Pacer 1604? Uh, not better, just different. The 1404 is going to be lighter, but it's going to overheat more. So if you really hammer the throttle, you can overheat the 1404s. Uh, Pacer is going to stay much cooler. Um, but it's going to be significantly heavier. So yeah, no, there's no better. They're just two different motors. Uh, Curtis Hayes says, Speedy B, I use a 20 by 20 with no issues. I've had USB pop off on larger, but I put some hot glue on it now. Uh, poor core guy says, that stack is God. It's taken about a year, including being in a tree for a week, being rained on, turn a mode, uh, a whole battery trying to get it out. Also, it's been submerged and was fine. I don't know how they did it, man. FPV Toast says, I've got a 20 by 20 Speedy B stack on my three inch. It hasn't blown up on me yet. Uh, Siskel FPV says, I've got a Speedy B 20 by 20 and two 30 by 30s. They have all been great. Bluetooth configuration is great for field work. Um, that's another reason why I want to do the Speedy B stack. Of course, you can just add external Bluetooth, but who the hell is going to do that? Um, at, the, at the event, at the race on Saturday, uh, I had to bring my laptop because I looked up the wind and I saw that it was going to be absurdly windy. And, um, yeah, I, I just, I, I brought the laptop so that I could get into beta flight and move the PIDs around. And I'm glad that I did, but yeah, having speedy B on board. And I, I do have the little speedy B, uh, USB plug-in thing, but like the way that those rigs are built, there's really not room for that thing to get in there, so I'd have to take the damn things apart, and I ain't doing that. Um, so yeah, man, having Speedy B on board would be really, really handy. You wouldn't use it all the time, but when you use it, 
It's really, really nice. Douglas Otwell says, PDB 20 by 20 has been good to me. Lost an OSD on one or two. That's interesting. Um, super, uh, I'm assuming that's uh, one of the legs popping up on the on the OSD because the OSD chips are pretty robust. Super 6.2 says, I have a 20 by 20 SpeedyB in my 3.5 inch whoop running Exynova 1804 3400KV uh, on 4S. Uh, flies is mad, have dozens of packs, no issues. Uh, Stryker says, I feel like Aaron should play a supervillain in a movie. He seems perfect for it. OMFPV is in the house. What's up, dude? He says, uh, uh, did you have an assistant on Saturday? I did not. I, I thought that they would have a PA for me um, because we've talked about it in the past, uh, but they did not. And it was totally fine. It, it's with an assistant... Um, it's nice because I can stay up in the air a little bit more, um, but it's not much more, and it and it is nice to take a a, a little bit of a breather. Um, so yeah, it was uh, the last year Patrick uh, came with me, and it was so much fun. Oh my god, it was just like you know, it it was it, it was like the fucking peanut gallery with the two of us, and then like you know, he's he's an actual FPV pilot, so like he knows the things that he can do that'll help me. Um, and then, like, he can, yeah, it, it was just, like, absolute best case scenario ever. And it was so much fun. Um, and uh, most of these events, I, I, I will have a PA there. But, yeah, this was, uh, it was totally fine. Like, when, when I realized they didn't have one for me, I was like, ah, all right, I'll be fine. Um, and then, yeah, it was, it was totally cool. I probably missed, I don't know, four or five opportunities to chase them one extra time but in the tv truck you know they've got uh, a dozen cameras to to pick from so like if i'm not in the up in the air it's it's not the end of the world they just take to take another camera um and yeah it's it's like i said it's really nice to take a little break it, it is I, I don't do it but like you wouldn't believe it is it is exhausting on a whole other level flying Back to 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 back batteries for like three hours, <laughs> like two or three hours, um, especially in a scenario where you're flying around like top tier kind of athletes, right? Like this isn't just like fucking around in a parking lot, like la 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 flying 50 batteries in a row. This is like high stress shit. Like don't crash in front of this Peloton and and have 20 riders go over the handlebars um, and just to do that over and over and over again with wind, with the crowd, um, right on the other side of the railing, right? It is, it is mega. Um, and it's funny, like I always realize like, like on the, uh, the, the first like hour of the drive home, the, the adrenaline just completely dumps out of me and it's just like, Oh, <laughs> I'm just in the car like, uh, and I'll, I always stop and, and get some disgusting fast food and that, and that, um, boosts me back up. But man, it, it is every, every, after every single one of these events, I'm like staggered at how mentally drained I am, um, from just concentrating so hard for, for so long. Um, so yeah, this is actually kind of nice <laughs> to, to, I would still obviously have preferred um to have Patrick there um but uh yeah it was different it, it was it was different to to not have anybody it was also kind of a a lower key event this 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 year um there was another bigger event in uh California I don't know if it was a bigger event but there was another cycling race in California going on at the same time so certain people were not at this event cuz they were in the California event um, and yeah, it was just like sort of more chill. A, a lot of times these events are very serious, um, which is great. Uh, but yeah, this was this was a little bit more laid back, which was neat. Uh, parkour guy says, could my warehouse's robot forklift and computer system be causing my ELRS Mobulus 6 to fail safe? Uh, it's very random and I never fail safe elsewhere. My LQ flashes the whole time, 10 to 40 feet away. Uh, that would be my guess. Yeah, it, it would make a lot of sense that they're on 2.4 gig um, because that's like what routers and, and a lot of that kind of stuff uses. So, yeah, they're probably on 2.4 just blasting. Uh, 
I don't know what to tell you to maybe try going down to a lower bit rate, go down to like a hundred or maybe even 50. Um, of course, up your power. You probably have already done that. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else you can do. Interesting. Uh, Salam says tiny whoop recommendations. I started FPV with DJ Avada gear, which I still have. Uh, uh, Salam, easiest thing you can do is to get when it comes into stock the Happy Model Mobula 6 2024. Um, it's just so good right out of the box, and then just fly it, just fly the hell out of it. Um, and then hang around here and we talk about upgrades. But to be honest, that thing really doesn't need upgrades, it is just unbelievable right out of the box. Uh, you will have something that is like 95% as good as what I fly. Uh, and yeah, fly the hell out of it. Uh, parkour guy says, check out speedy B's USB plugin and Bluetooth module. That's what I have. Uh, it doesn't install inside the drone uses any drone USB port, like a PC, no extra weight. Plus you can charge your phone off a lipo. Yep. That's what I've got. Um, but the way that these frames are built, it, it just won't fit in there. Uh, Metal Dirtson says, standing offer, uh, I will fly out and tech quads for you at one of those races. I got airline miles I can burn. Nice, dude. Nice, man. Um, I have a hard time remembering. I I've had a bunch of people offer me that. I have a really tough time remembering who offered, when they offered. Um, so if you hear me talking about a, a cycling race, remind me. Uh, that's the only way. I don't have another one on the books right now. Um, this might be my only event uh, of 2024. I hope to hell that it's not uh, because I love flying these events and I was really hoping to go the other direction with this and get more of this kind of work. Um, but yeah, at the moment, uh, this is the only one of the year, which makes me sad. Uh, Jeremy says, do you use different rates when flying a whoop versus flying other quads? I do not and I don't recommend that anyone do. Um, your rates are the one thing that affects your muscle memory the absolute most. And the one thing that you can do to get better as a pilot quicker and more consistently so that you don't plateau uh, is to have every single thing that you fly feel as similar as possible. Best case scenario is to fly the exact same thing forever. You build two or three or four completely identical rigs and that's all you fly. If you want to get good, that is the best thing that you can possibly do to get good. Um, that's kind of boring, right? There's the, there's so much cool variety in FPV. Um, so at the very least, for God's sakes, leave your rates. Pick a rate, uh, uh, pick a set of rates that works on everything and run that rate set on absolutely everything. Um, one of the most difficult things to do is to adapt. You change a rig um, and you spend like two or three batteries adapting and getting used to that rig and then you can start to fly good. But then you switch to another rig and you have to adapt again. And that's gonna happen when you go from a tiny, when you go from a 65 to a 75, you're gonna have to adjust. Then you go up to a five inch rig, you're gonna have to adjust big time. Richard Mead, thanks for the subscription, buddy. Um, so yeah, do not run different rates on any of your rigs. Uh, Leo Root says, do you use the DJI smart uh, remote to relay the video into the TV truck? Yes, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, yeah, DJI smart remote is what takes, so you, you plug uh, USB into your goggles, that goes down to the smart controller, um, and then that outputs to HDMI to the TV truck. Uh, you can also do this with a Pi, if you can find one in stock. Um, and then do it yourself, or you can get something called the Cosmo Streamer, which is a pre-built Pi. Um, so yeah, a couple different ways to do it. Uh, back when I built these things, there was only the one way to do it, which was the smart controller, uh, which Joshua Bardwell very kindly sold me for um, a lot less than it, than he could have probably gotten for it on eBay. Uh, and just like that, we're caught up on chat. Couple of shout outs from some beautiful people that have joined the Patreon. Caleb, thank you for joining the Patreon. You are now a member of the gangliest gang of all the gangs in the gangland. Who else is watching um, Fallout on Amazon Prime? I know someone is. I am, 
I got two more episodes left, but I think I'm going to stop watching it and start watching it with Azalea. But I don't know. Azalea's 13 might be a little young for it. It it, it doesn't. It's it's mainly just violence, though. It, it There's not like overtly sexual stuff in it. So I, I think it's OK because, you know, violence is all over TikTok. So what the hell? Um you think 13's too young for it, for, for Fallout? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I haven't, um, I, I, I watched, I wasn't paying, I, I, even if, even if I don't watch it with Azalea, I don't think I'm going to watch it with Maggie. I don't think she'll like it. Um, I'm going to rewatch it because I started watching it this last week when I was working really hard on that Raxus build. So I wasn't really paying attention. Like I, I got the I got the gist of it, but I, I want to like actually sit down and, and enjoy it. So I'm I'm gonna rewatch it. Um, but yeah, I I, I think I, I might um, I think I might watch those. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Jeremy over Jeremy O says, in that case, do you use Expo on your throttle? Absolutely. At this point, I use Expo on everything. Um, on these rigs to chase. I only use a little bit of Expo because I use a huge range of cruising throttle. Um, when when they sit up on their seats and they're really conserving energy, when, when the whole Peloton sits up on their seats and nobody's attacking, these guys will only be going like 25, 30 miles an hour. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. And when, when they do that, I have to really back off. Like I have to really pitch back and I end up having to drop elevation too. Cause otherwise I'll be just looking up at the sky. And then when these guys attack and they sprint, I am like in it, dude, I'm like 70% throttle to catch up and then keep up with these guys. They're really, really, really fast. So in that case where you're using a big, there's a massive variability in your cruising throttle, um, you actually don't really want Expo. I, I, so I just run a little bit of it because still like 80% of the time I'm at about 40% throttle. Um, so it still does help. And then, yeah, when I'm going really fast, it does technically hurt me a little bit, but I'm only running like 0.1 or 0.2, I think, of Expo. And that's just not much. It's not making much of an S curve. It's, it's still pretty linear. Um, so it helps me out when... It helps me out the majority of the time when they're cruising normal, 25, 35 ish. Um, and, and that's when I can really be super technical. Like I, I really love to just drop down right on top of their helmets uh, and just be right there. It's just such a cool view. And so when I do that, that's when it's in that like nice butter zone where it's nice and smooth and I can move the throttle up and down a little bit without seeing visually seeing the quad moving. Um, and then yeah, every once in a while when they hammer, I'm not on top of them. Like when they're pushing and they're attacking, I'm up. I'm like 10 feet up. I want to give them space. And I'm like so deep into the throttle that I'm like, yeah, these motors are going to start getting hot. I don't, like the battery's going to start sagging. God knows, right? Like when you're really pouring the throttle on, like that's the time when something's going to blow up. So you want to give yourself some some leeway in that situation. Um, so yeah, it works really, really well. Uh, my dad says, give away a frame. Uh, we can do that. Uh, let me get through these. Um, let me get through these Patreon shoutouts though. Trey Dove also joining the Patreon. Welcome to the gangly gang, my friend. Uh, these are going back from like a week ago. I apologize. I haven't done these sooner friends. Joey Murray. Welcome to the gangly gang. Thank you for your support. Uh, Vilius P. Welcome my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark Jimenez. Welcome to the gang. Justin the Daz, thank you as well. Uh, Michael Elbrecht, thank you, dude. Arcadius, welcome, my friend. Thank you for your support. Uh, Jack Ryan, I will ship your Etsy order. Look, they actually sent me a damn email. That was nice of them. Uh, where are we at here? We've got a little. <laughs> when you join the Patreon, you can type in whatever name you want. Sean Nortress decided to type in Shitstorm for his name. So welcome, Shitstorm. You're, in, you're now a member of the Gangly Gang. Thank you for your support. <laughs> 
Fly Tribe Magazine, uh, they had joined previously. Uh, shout out to them. They're, I also put them on the uh, on the opening screen there. Uh, well deserved. They've been a, a mega supporter, and I and I super appreciate it. Uh, Damon Fredericks, welcome to the Gangly Gang. Thank you for support, my friend. Uh, Mao Dib, welcome. Thank you, dude. And it looks like I've got a uh, looks like a couple more pin vices have sold. I gotta get those shipped out. Uh, I'm behind, guys. I, I I was just completely out of action all weekend, and then like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I was hammering on the Raxus build. So I'm I'm way behind. If you haven't heard from me, I'll get back to you this week for sure. Mega FPV, welcome to the Gangly Gang. Thank you for the support. And what else we got going here? Am I caught up? I might be caught up. Dirt, 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 dirt. Come on. What's happening here? Can you please? There we go. Am I caught up? I think I'm caught up. Wow, look at all this garbage email. I might not be caught up. There's too much garbage email for me to sort through. God damn, where did all this trash email come from? Uh... Let's do a quick frame giveaway. If you want to win a newbie drone cockroach 65 V3 frame coupon code, which is it's a five dollar discount. That's what the frame costs. You go on newbie drones website. You add this uh, cockroach 65 V3 frame to your cart in whichever flavor you want. Um, and then you put the coupon code in. It removes that amount of money. If you add enough stuff to your cart, you can get free shipping. You can get a completely free frame or you can just pay for shipping and get a frame for the cost of shipping. Uh, that's how it works. If you type frame into the chat, everybody else stop typing into the chat for a minute, one minute. And if you wanna win a frame, type the word frame into the chat and then I'll pull a, a, a list and, and we'll do a quick, uh, we'll do one, we'll do one quick, well, we'll do two. We'll do two quick frame giveaways. Uh, everybody else hold your comments for one minute. Get this ready here. All right, cool. Morton Upshot says, uh, fallout depends on your thoughts of a 13 year old knowing that there is, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, nothing visible, but it's referenced. Yeah, I know they, they, they did, they did mention it a couple times so far. And I was like, uh, but I mean, TikTok, right? Like. It's awful. It's just awful. And every single kid is just on there 24 hours a day at this point. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Jeremy says, I'm a bit confused. Is throttle considered separate from rates? Does that change per quad? Um, to me, throttle is considered different from rates. Yeah, for me, rates are pitch roll y'all. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, can I get a channel? Says just came to boost analytics. Thank you, dude. Jeremy says, uh, and everyone in chat, thanks for answering all my questions. I really appreciate it. You got it, my man. Uh, parkour guy says my fin vice just came. Love your envelope packaging. Thank you, dude. Enjoy it. All right, cool. Everybody's typing frame, and I'm going to come in here to participants, and I'm going to Adam Weston got in just at the last second there. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to submit it. That's it. You had your chance. You had your chance, friends. It's now or never. Here we go. Uh, is that working? Hold on. Yeah, it was. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. There it is. Ready? Here we go. Oh, wait. The, the microphone's over here now. <laughs> Scotty Scott's on the bottom in the middle. Ant BBTHC is on the left there. He's hanging in. Parkour guy hard left. He's hanging in. Adam Weston just got blown away. Cloud Hopper's on the top right. He's still there. Scotty Scott's still there. Nope. Oh, wow. Look at that. Cloud Hopper wins. Congratulations, brother. Uh, Cloud Hopper, you need to message me. I only know you as Cloud Hopper right now. Uh, or Cloud Hopper, as I mistyped it. Uh, you need to message me somewhere. All my con contact info is over on CIDFPV.com. Um, message me, say, yo, this is Cloud Hopper. I won a uh, Cockroach65 coupon code. My name is blah blah blah. My email address is blah bling And then I'll reply back with the uh, with the coupon code for you. 
We're gonna hit play again. And everything is all out of order. Adam Wesson's on the bottom left. He's still here. Slow Cal's on the bottom right. He's still there right next to Stavel. Jay Hines as well. Uh, parkour guy off on the left again. It's gonna be, it's parkour guy. Maybe, why is it not? There it goes, parkour guy. Congratulations, same deal. Message me, tell me, yo, it's parkour guy. P-A-R-K-O-U-R guy. Congratulations, friends. We'll do another one or two on, what? Uh, on Wednesday. St can you, what? Thanks for the reminder, Father. Hey, speaking of reminders, today is Monday, April 15th, two days before my 43rd birthday. It'll be fine. Metaderson says, this reminds me, check the CIDFPV Reacts channel on Discord for what I just bought. Where the hell is Discord? Do I not? There it is. Uh, where's the reacts thing? Where did I even put it? There I put it. Ah, the screaming goat was at Barnes and Noble. Nice. That's it. That's the one, man. Yeah, Evan and Kate and Evan and Caitlin. Uh, I used to watch them a long time ago. Uh, doing the Furby robot dog is just ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, shit. I think I started watching that just because Caitlin's cute, but then I was like, man, these guys make some good content. Uh, all right. What else is happening over here? No, no, no. Let's get out of there. Uh, okay. Hey, we got to do the thing that's in the thing. Stephen Woodruff says, happy government payday. Uh, all right. Here we go. Do we have enough time? Oh, we got tons of time. Beautiful. So I've got three different sets of 1002s. RC in power, 22,000s. Uh, iFlate Zing, 22,000s. And Flywoo, 23,500s. All on 1610 by blade propellers. All on Meteor, 60, Meteor 75 airframes. Let's test them. I, I have not back-to-back -back them. But uh, I have flown them all, and so far I can't really tell a difference. I, I, I don't think there's a significant enough difference between them to say, like, definitely get this one. But that's what I'm kind of hoping to get out of this test here today. So I've got four batteries that I'm pulling off the charger right now as I smack the microphone. Um... The Flywoos are technically the higher KV, right? 23,500 KV, but the KV numbers that these manufacturers put on the motors do not perfectly mirror the the actual KV that you get from, um, from those motors. I'm gonna show you that right now with, well, no, uh, we're not gonna really look at that. So they, they measure KV without a propeller on. It's an unloaded um, test. I'm not gonna pull, I'll pull one propeller off each one of these. So we're going to test motor number four on either one of these rigs. Uh, and I'm going to show you that the uh, the KV of the motors do not match up with... Uh, the, the KV stamped on the motors do not match up with the actual KV that the motors turn. Um it's a really good indication. It's the best indication that we've got. But if you've looked at any amount of actual motor testing by Ryan Harrell or Chris Rosser, you'll have seen that the, the they test um, uh, the rated KV versus actual KV, and it's always off. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really matter as much as running the actual motor. So let's do that real quick. Let let's put the uh, RC and power rig into beta flight. We're gonna spin it up in the motors tab. Um, the four batteries fresh off the charger are over here. This battery has been sitting uh, charged for a couple of days. So this is the one that we're gonna use in beta flight here because I don't wanna throw off the testing with those other ones. So plugging it in, 
We're going to launch beta flight. That's going to take a minute. Morton Upshot says, I was going to suggest uh, that you have Maggie plug, it, plug you in without telling you which uh, to blind test. It is 11.15. She's been asleep for hours by now, probably. Um, but that's okay. Look, they're, they're, they're so similar to one another. Like, if, yeah, it, it's, 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 if it's obvious, great. If not, that's fine too, right? This isn't like, um, this isn't like a high, this testing doesn't matter. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say without saying it. But if there's one of them that really jumps out, awesome. Let's, let's all buy that one. Uh, but I don't necessarily think that there will be. Um, I think they're all pretty similar. What I have noticed in flying them is that the zings sound like shit. You'll hear it. They, they just like, <laughs> they just make noise. They don't sound good. Um, so let's not buy the zings probably, but we'll still back to back. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. So we're going to take a look at the um, ESC RPM ratings. Here we go. Plug it in the battery. And I'm going to spin up the un the non-propeller motor first. Ready? Uh, it's motor four. And so just look at the RPM here. Ready? 78,000. Yep, 78,000 is the highest number that I saw. Now I'm going to spin up one of the loaded uh, motors. 52,000. 52,000. Really, really consistent wow really consistent that's super impressive uh do me a favor somebody type those numbers into the chat let's do it again on another rig now we're gonna test the zings somebody type those two numbers into the chat for me please because i've already forgotten them <laughs> if you have to rewind please rewind uh this is not a perfectly this is not a perfect test this is a different aio that i'm plugging this into uh, but this is as good as we can do. Try to do this quick, I should say. All right. Ready? Let's test this guy out. Here's the unloaded motor. 84,000. And here are the loaded motors. 52,000. 52,000. <laughs> okay. Remember when I said that this is worthless? Uh, so those are the iFlight Zing motors. Uh, somebody type those into the chat, please. Uh, and now we're going to fly these two rigs. And then I'm going to pull one of them apart. They're going to fly exactly the same. Uh, I'm going to pull the center section off of one of them, probably the iFlight Zing one. And I'm going to put it into the frame that's got the flywheel motors. Uh, and then we'll do that same test on this. And then we'll fly this. Uh, but just from what we just did, I can tell you that it doesn't make any difference. Um, buy the 1002s that are in stock from the place that you're ordering from. If you're ordering from Newbie Drone, it's going to be the iFlights, iFlight Zings. Uh, if you're ordering from Pyro Drone or Get FPV or Race Day Quads, it's going to be the RCN Powers. Um, but yeah, if, if in a loaded test, it's not making at least a little bit more it's not going to make a difference. Uh, the RC and power motors probably are a little bit lighter, though. That's going to make a little bit of a difference. If you're doing an order at Newbie Drone and you need a set of 1002s, just get the iFlight Zings, I think. Um, but let's put them up in the air, fly a battery on each, and see. It's it's not That test is not the only thing that matters. Um, it's just the thing that matters the most. So let's do it anyway, and then we can say that we've done it. Know what I mean? What am I putting these on for? I need a transmitter. I need to figure out which module I need. This stuff's all put away and packed up nicely in my case from weekend. Fucking Crossfire modules. Yo, I'm done with Crossfire, bro. These... These uh, dual band ELRS modules cannot come out soon enough. I had so many micro fail safes on Crossfire this weekend. I don't know what the hell was going on. Um, it always came back, but Jesus, I've not had I've not had this many micro fail safes in the entire time that I've flown FPV. 
Like, it, it was weird, man. Really, really, really weird. I'm just done with it, man. I've been done with TBS for a long time. I don't like the company. I don't like their fucking too cool for school attitude. I don't like Trappy. He treat he treated Joshua like total shit a long time ago and never really apologized for it. Done. Done with TBS. That too cool for school shit, like, come on now. Relax. You're not that fucking cool, bro. We're flying toy helicopters, for Christ's sakes. Leave it. Here we go, friends! RC and power up first. Uh, Alright. board says, when you're in a high-noise environment, you get those... Yeah, I was not. It was not a high noise environment. In in either case, the wedding was in, was in the middle of the, of the field. It was just in the middle of the woods. I had like line of sight at like 400 feet away. It was so weird. So 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 weird. Um TBS gear, the, the main thing that I've noticed with their gear over the last 7 years is that every time you put power to TBS gear, it like loses a bit of its performance and my TBS gear is getting older. And so it's had power put to it a bunch of times. And like, yeah, it's so true for their VTXs. Like you power up their VTXs a hundred times and they're like one milliwatt. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess that applies to all their gear. It's not uh, electronics should not work that way, but I don't know. Maybe they're just pushing them to their absolute limit. Quadum says maybe the sun flare from the weekend could be. They're aliens, that's it. Aliens. <laughs> that's the one. Turn this VRX off. Turn this one on. Look at that, man. No OSD. What the hell? Whoever that was that told me about that earlier. God, thank you. Swamp gas. Or weather balloon. That's it. Oh, 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 you know what it is? Yeah, so so you can get a clean output. That's what it is. Sorry, I, I knew about this. You can get a clean output, but then you're flying blind. That's what it is. On on DJI, you can get a um you can get your OSD in the goggles, but then have the clean output as well. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't really want to fly blind like that. That's a little sketchy. Um I mean with tiny whoops it doesn't really matter, but um, yeah, flying professionally without knowing the battery voltage, that's not a good idea. I, I would have to set up, like, a really accurate timer on the, on the transmitter. Uh, no, what I would do is get the, figure out how to get the transmitter to read out, uh, the voltage and whatnot. But that's annoying. Who the hell wants to do that? Is this the wrong module? I think it is. Uh, or the thing's been on the ground so long it's in Wi-Fi mode. It's in Wi-Fi mode. Uh, farts. Alright, here we go. Okay, let's try this again. Come on, little fella, bind. I think I did have the right module on here. But the thing was in Wi-Fi mode. Yeah, 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 I know you're overheating. Just, just hang on a second. Just hang on. Come on, bind, you bastard, bind. Bind! Bind, come on! Please! Hey! There's some airflow. Alright. Okay, RC and Power 1002s first. These are the ones that everybody says are God. They're not God. This performance sucks. Like, why is this battery at 3.7 already? And this performance doesn't suck. It's just not. Look at, the, look, look at that micro. Look at all these little fucking fail safes. What ELRS has been doing this to me lately too. See, that was a huge fail safe there. It all. What's weird is it only does it on y'all. It, it's so weird. You see it snap in there. There it is. Look at it. Oh boy. I'm doing smooth yaw movements. If you see it snap, see, and now it's fine. 
It's so weird. Like the first one, I as soon as I start, I wonder if ELRS is like hunting around for. Doesn't ELRS hunt around for for a good channel? I wonder if if it has now found a good channel. You know what I mean? Well, wow, this battery just. All right, this doesn't count. This battery sucks. What the hell? All right, I gotta put more batteries on this charger. I'm considering throwing this battery away. Instead, I'm just gonna write a red X on it. Uh, that's my reminder to pay more attention to that battery. Um, I'll fly it a couple more times, and if it continues to be a shit sandwich like it is right now, it's getting thrown away. Uh, okay, so we're going to grab another one of these batteries, and we're just going to reset real quick. All right, let's try this for real this time. I need to get more of these 450 BT 2.0 batteries. Uh, CMYK says the flight feed is stuttering. Yeah, you guys were saying that last time. I, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, just stop flying walk snail on the streams, I guess. Start flying more analog. There we go. That's a little bit better. But, yeah, I mean, like... Everybody made these RC and... Pe oh, God, stop, yo. The fuck... What is the deal with this shit? The little micro failsafe thing is really annoying. Um, these aren't bad. Really? Oh, come on. Oh. Yeah, no. I mean, these motors aren't bad, but they're not good. They're they're not as good from they're not as good as the uh, Beta FPD 1102s. Why is there no video at all now? Oh my God! What is happening? Why? I just unplugged and replugged the uh, Elgato HD60S. Let me unplug and replug the goggles. What the fuck? Uh, okay. Encoding overloaded. Consider what? Okay. When did that? When did that die? Hold on. The VTX is getting really hot. I gotta cool it down a little bit. Has nothing to do with that though. The goggles are working fine with the feed from the quad. More micro fail safes all over the place. Yep, there's another one. Now it's fine. Wow, okay. Walksnail just shit the bed. Uh Okay. Uh when did that start? Right after I landed it, huh? Fuck, why, why won't it? Uh, I'm gonna blame this cable, I think. It is not quad related. This is, uh, either the walk snail cable or the HD60S. Okay, uh, I guess we're not doing any more testing. Uh, uh, I guess maybe the cable shit the bed. This cable has been a little bit flaky. Um, so I guess it finally died all the way. I am blowing on the quad. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's gone. <laughs> well. 
That's not going terribly well. Now I can't get the BT 2.0 plug unplugged. There we go. Uh, OBS sees the HD 60S Plus. Wow. Okay. That's incredibly disappointing. Well. Um, the, the HD 60 is not, it doesn't have any lights on it or anything weird. Yeah, no, it's just, it just, it's just dead. Either the cable died or the HD 60 died, or maybe the, the Walksnail goggles are not wanting to output. Hey, let me power cycle the Walksnail goggles. Maybe they're, I don't know. Let's see. All right, they're coming back up. You guys would not believe how quickly you can dump the temperature on your uh, digital VTXs by blowing on them. It goes down like a couple degrees a second. It's incredible. Hey, there we go. Okay, I, I guess I needed to power cycle the Walksnell goggles. That's weird. Uh, oh, you piece of shit. That was the, the cable. I think that's a separate issue. All right, here's the iFlight Zing rig. Uh, with a fresh battery? No. Oh, come on now. Oh, I forgot to put the propeller back on it. Uh, user error. Okay. It'll work way better with a fourth propeller. Yeah, don't help me troubleshoot, guys. It makes me want to kill a child. Feels exactly the same. It doesn't even sound bad. I, I swore last time I flew this, it didn't... Oh. Uh. Yeah, it feels exactly the same. Um, it might be a little bit heavier with these motors, but I can't tell. I don't understand why so many people were like, yo, the RC and Power 1002s are, are God's gift to motors. They're, 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 they're not. I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with them, but they're not god's gift to anything they're a 22,000 kv 1002 like they're oh rejection Yeah, it's it. you just sit on full throttle and like just wait, just ah, ah. All right, hold on. Let's go back to the RC and power rig now. Well, no, hold on. Let's do a uh, fresh battery on this. All right, so this is a known good battery here that I just ran down. Good. Uh, we're going to fly a fresh battery on this. I, I just realized that I, I recycled the uh, RC and power battery. Uh, I'm just going to do a couple of uh, full throttle blasts, and then I'm going to switch the battery over. All right, here we go. Uh, June Loco, I don't know, man. you got to ask YouTube that. I have no idea. I have no control. Ready? All right, that's the iFlight zings. You could hear it, right? L you can listen. You can hear how high they spin up. Now, if these motors are more powerful, they'll spin up higher. I have that specific pitch in my head. I'm like playing it over and over again. Warp, warp. That's what it sounded like. Now let's see, RC and power. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, Wax now, come on. You can do it. There we go. 
Yeah, it's the same. You can hear that, right, guys? They're both 22,000 KB. If you can get the RC and power motors, get them, because I think they're a little bit lighter. And they're better looking. Maybe. The eye flights, you can get them in black. Um, but yeah, no, the, the, there's no difference between these and the Zings. Going back to the Zings, same battery. Okay. Sorry if I was a little short with you there, June Loco. You're just like the third or fourth person to say that, and it's just... It's a no... I don't... It pisses me off that YouTube... Can't get their shit straightened out. Apologize if I took that out on you. Yeah, no, these fly exactly the same, man. The RC and power isn't some... Magical fairy motor. Okay, that's good. Uh, it, it, it's that's nice because we can get either motor and and it's fine. You know what I mean? Like this is good news. This is good news that one of these motors is not drastically more powerful than the other. Uh, I'm going to pull the. Mm... Well, I haven't tested the flywheel yet, six six one. So. Um. But no, they're not. The, the, neither one is faster than the other. Uh, you'd be able to hear it. Motor testing is, is pretty easy when you can hear the motors. Because the when you go full throttle, they'll wind up. And if it's going to make more power, it's going to go, instead of, it's, gonna go, it's just going to go up a little bit in pitch. Um, I've been a musician since I was like nine years old. So I have a, I have a pretty decent ear for pitch and notes. Um, so yeah, I can tell like immediately when, when a motor is winding up higher. Um, and that's just, that's a dead giveaway. Like it's, it's just one of the really, really, really easy ways to tell, um, if a motor is going to make more power or if it's a higher KV or whatever, it's what happens every single time another one of these 702s comes in. That's a higher or lower KV. Um, I can just, I can hear it. I can hear that it winds up a little bit higher. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of which of these I'm going to pull apart. Uh, I'm going to pull the one apart with the iFlight Zing motors because I think that they're a little bit heavier. Um, and there's just no reason to not run a slightly, yeah, there's no reason not to run the, the slightly lighter motor. Um, so yeah, the, these iFlight Zings are officially for sale. I don't need three sets of 1002s. Uh, and yeah, like you just saw, they're completely fine. This is not me trying to sell these motors by lying to you. Um, I am more interested in the testing than recouping my 40 whole dollars or whatever it was that I paid for these motors. So real quick, like, uh, if you're ever interested in testing motors or propellers, here's how you do it. You buy a couple of extra frames and you bolt all the motors down to all different frames. And then all you have to do is unplug the four motors, unscrew the four canopy bolts, take the whole center section out and drop it into one of the other frames as you're about to watch me do. Uh, that is the quickest way to head to head stuff. Uh, and it's important to, to be quick with this because in my brain right now is the flight feel. Uh, and if too much time goes by, I will forget that and, and it'll be a worse comparison point. So you wanna be as quick as possible. That's why having two identical rigs built is kinda sorta the best way. The problem with that is how shitty the quality control is in the world of FPV components 
Um, so two identical rigs are anything but identical. Um, usually they're pretty damn identical, but man, it, it's a, it's tough. They're, they're, they're really not actually identical, but they're usually close enough. There's so much variance in all this stuff, um, that, yeah, it's tough, but I do my level best. This is the best testing setup that I've found. Usually I can, I can tell a difference. Quite frankly, when I can't tell a difference, it's not bad news. It's just like, cool, it doesn't matter which one. Get either one. They both perform totally fine. Or not. They both perform like shit. And don't get either one. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay. They're... Um, you know, one of the, one of the things that's really cool about like diving deep on this stuff and, um, putting the time in to research individual components is every once in a while, you will find that unicorn component that is really cheap, really durable and really good, right? Powerful, whatever clean, fast, whatever. Um, but that's pretty rare. Usually there is not that unicorn. Usually stuff performs as advertised. Um, which is why, like, you know, doing this testing of, like, testing three different 1002s, it's always like, ooh, like, like I get excited because there might be that unicorn and that feels good when there is. But, when I don't find that unicorn, a lot of times it's like, shit, well, that was a waste of time. Not at all. That was not a waste of time at all. In fact, that's a better situation. It's a better situation that you guys can buy any of these motors and and have, you know, get 1002, 22,000 kV worth of power. Um, it's actually way more annoying when they're in when there is that unicorn because then all you guys go out and buy it and it goes out of stock for two months and then when it comes back in, it gets discontinued or lit on fire or some shit like that. And there we go. Well, now I got to plug these in. Uh, but yeah, that's how quick you can uh, have a have your test bed kind of change. And these frames are cheap, right? And you're going to break them at some point. So it's good to have extra frames. So yeah, do it, yo. Do it. Do some head-to-head -head testing, friends. It's fun. It's actually a really good exercise to do, too, because you can really, like... It really forces you to to uh, tap into, like, a different set of brain muscles in terms of, uh, like, what you're thinking about and what you're feeling for when you're flying. Um, all that being said, beware the placebo. It is very strong. Um, if there's any chance that you don't feel a difference between the two things that you're testing, you're not feeling a difference between the two things you're testing. The placebo is going, well, you stupid son of a bitch, you spent 50-some dollars on these motors, you goddamn better feel a difference. You must be an idiot if you can't feel a difference. Ciotti felt a difference. Nah. Don't hold yourself up to anybody else. Here we go, Flywoo. Let's give him a listen. Uh, this battery looks physically beat up. So that's not good. Nothing is on. I plugged the quad in, but nothing is on. Uh, I'm going to get caught up on the... Uh... Oh, good call, uh, Cole Powers. Looking at the OSD for the RPM. Thank you, dude. Oh shit! I pulled the uh, I pulled the propeller off of this one. Well, it's okay. I pulled the wrong propeller off anyway. It's fine. Let's fly it and then we'll and then we'll test it. I have another battery on the charger right now. Oh shit! The other battery is at four point three three. Let's just fly this real quick on this banged up battery and I'll see if I can hear that pitch being different. Transmitter, what are you doing? Are you gonna turn on for me or are you gonna just be a jerk? Hey. Oh, the motors are not spinning the right direction. <laughs> Forgot about that part. That's the other part. That's the other part that that you got to do. Is you got to put them into beta flight and 
get the motor spinning the right direction. <laughs> uh, but the pitch that I heard on the ground was pretty damn similar to what I heard on those other two. So it's probably about the same, but we'll see. Uh, connecting the beta flight. Here we go. The sound of our people. Motor direction. Wizard. Yes. Go. Motor one is props in. That's wrong. Motor two props out. That's right. Motor three props out. Motor four props in. That's wrong. Reverse it. Stop motors. Everybody's making thrust. Here we go. Double check. Out. 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 And out. We're good. All right. Disconnect. Plug. Here we are. Okay, I'm just gonna. Nope, I'm gonna take the battery that's fresh off the charger. It's stupid not to. Here we go. And I'm gonna throw one of these other batteries back onto the charger to get it. Ah, perfect. That one's at 4.25. It'll probably be up to full voltage in a minute. And then I will put it in beta flight and uh, we'll do that RPM test in beta flight. And then we will have tested all three of these 1002s as unscientifically as possible. That's not true. This is a, I don't know, 80% accurate test. To get that extra 20% is a complete waste of time, in my opinion. Here we go. Same. No, a little bit less, I think. Let's get an RPM reading from the OSD real quick. All I gotta do is disarm. 44,766. I think these might be making a little bit less power. Whoa. My guess would be that the magnets are not as thick or they're not as strong or something. A little toe shot there for you. Let's go upstairs with it. Oh boy. Yeah, man, these, these, like, you would think that up here, these things would really shine, but they don't. The 65 millimeter rigs are just so much better. Not, I mean, yes, these are carrying around walks now, but I don't know, man. I, I expected so much more from 75 millimeter. And it just, like, kind of constantly lets me down. It's totally flyable though, and I mean, if you want one rig to fly outside and inside, I don't know. I would still do a 65, but. Oh God, why me? Man, that weight. I could not get it to stop charging for that. Uh, the base on that little jib jab. Ah! What I was trying to do. What I was trying to do was this. That's what I was trying to do. That is fucking cool looking. Let's get that again. Oh, I love it. I love that. Give me more. Okay. Uh, how did that RPM... How did that RPM compare? Uh, this is now dead. 4.3. Three, three, kind of close in. Hold on, let me put a bunch of these batteries on here. Check the voltages. 4.29. Th 4.02. So for the record, if you fly a battery down to 3.5 volts and you come in, 
and then it bounces all the way back up to like 3.9 or 3.8. If it bounces up to 3.8, I'm, I'm cool. If it bounces up to like 3.9 or 4, that is a battery that is either, either that battery is done or you've got a rig that is sagging the shit out of your batteries. Um, and you need, and, and so either you're just okay with that or look into a battery, try to find a battery with more MAH, or that might be also be a sign to go up to a bigger motor. A motor that gets too hot is going to saturate um, and, and just eat more amps than it needs to. So pay attention to that. First thing to consider, though, is is the um, is the uh, the battery just shot. But if you have a bunch of batteries that are doing that, yeah, something else is going on. Hey, let's plug it into Betaflight. Do you guys have those uh, RPM numbers handy? Can somebody scroll back up in chat and, and look for them real quick while I get this plugged into Beater Flight? BLD0550 with a $5 super chat. Thank you, dude. He says, what are your thoughts on HD0 Freestyle V2 VTX? I cannot... I want to love HD0. I can't. That VTX is awful heavy and awful expensive, and the video quality is not great. The latency is awesome, but I would rather just run analog for a lot less money. Um, it's not... HD0 is not better enough than analog to justify the incredible increase in cost. Um, especially if you already have analog stuff, which I do. If I was coming into the hobby fresh, I guess, yeah, then it would be HD0, although it is still an awful lot more expensive. Uh, here we go. Wait, nope, I gotta get the battery plugged in. Uh, let's compare this to the other one. Unloaded motor and then the loaded motors. I don't remember any of those numbers. Hopefully you guys do. Here we go. Uh, understand the risks. This is the unloaded motor. 85,000. I think I remember that. And then the loaded down ones. 52,000. Yep. 52,000. They're all the same, my friends. All the same. All the 1002s are the same. Buy the ones that are the coolest color. Um... Yeah, the the Flywoo twenty three thousand five hundreds are gold and purple. The RC and Powers are light blue and pink or orange. The Zings are black. Buy the ones that are either in stock or are your favorite color. Buy the ones that are your favorite color because you deserve your rigs to look good. Uh, let's put this prop back on here, and we're gonna fly the Flywoo rig. And then we're going to fly the RC and power rig so that we have kind of back to back these two because that's what I said I was going to do. And damn it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a completely fresh battery here. And that'll be the last thing we do tonight, my friends. Uh, no, I'm going to get caught up on chat too. But uh, let me go over to the RC and power rig. No, let's stick with the uh, flywheel rig. And then we'll do the RC and power rig. Here we go. You guys don't mind watching me fly, I assume. Here we go. Hey! Ah! Ah, twice! Let me through, you fuck! Oh, get you some. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, that almost got stuck in my hair. <laughs> oh, God, what a r unbelievable rejection. That was like my whole high school. Your boy's on fucking fire tonight. You know what it is? I was flying those... Those big heavy rigs. <laughs> I was flying those big heavy sub 250 rigs. And so I'm like, I'm out of that like ultra light 65 millimeter tiny whoop mode. Oh God, that sounded awful. All right, flew that down to 3.7. Let's go right over to the RC and power rig with this 
4.34 volt battery and it's going to be exactly the same. Maybe, maybe not. RCN power going up. 16-bit <laughs> says it combines the blurriness of digital with the breakup of analog, the worst of both worlds. I don't understand HD zero. <laughs> I think that's one of the best descriptions I've ever heard of it. Looks exactly the same, doesn't it, friends? <laughs> I don't know. This, this, maybe this has a little bit more. Maybe this has a little bit more stank. Uh, I'm not sure, but maybe. Hey. Stop it. Get out of there. Stop it. <laughs> My goodness. Ah! Oh, shit. Hey, uh, live stream on Wednesday is going to be 6 to 8. Because it's my birthday. Don't miss it. It's going to be a real extravaganza. That's not going to be a real extravaganza. Oh! Oh! <laughs> that was a hard hit, baby. Whoa. That was a big, nasty slam. Seems to have survived, though. I got... I don't know. I don't know what happened there. I got a little bit... Off and I ended up full throttling it into the ground. Ah, I knew I wasn't going to be able to settle it down. Oh man, I love that. I really love that. I gotta come up with a name for this. Oh boy. So that's the problem with doing that is that it opens the door for just full throttling into the bottom of the coffee table. I'm going to call this the simulator flick, I think. And I'm going to mess it all up. Yikes. Hopefully that didn't hit any buttons that mattered. Uh, so that's the RCN power rig. Real quick, because I need to dump this battery down. I'm going to swap back over to the flywheel rig and there we go come on plug in come on come on come on come on come on come on there it goes here we go nah man it's exactly the same Shame on Flywoo for marking these a higher KB than they actually are. Maybe. They might actually be the higher KV. I doubt it. Ah, rejected. Oh, you bastard. Ah, there it was. Almost. Ugh, gross. That doesn't count. Oh! Screw you! Stop plinkoing me! Oh, you fuck. Where did you... What? Come on. Oh, what if I'd... What if I'd gone through that? Oh, man. That's the next move we gotta hit. All right, hold on. So in order to line this up, oh boy, if I can hit this, there's no better pilot on earth. I'm never going to be able to do it. So to li here's how you line it up, though. Right through there, keep it straight. Fuck! Ah, it's unrecoverable. Oh, no! Hey, 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 hey! Here we go. 
Try it again. Leave me alone! No! No, nope. man, that's... I'm gonna get it. But it's not gonna be tonight. Not gonna be with this rig either, Jesus. Getting some good crash... Smash... Stress testing in, though. Yeah, that's a big throw. To get it out of here. Ugh, there, it was there, that was it. Did it come down? Ugh, no, yeah, that's a big, oh boy. Down here like this. Ugh, yeah, that's tough to get it that high. Hey! Fire tonight! Come on, now this is the best I've flown these rigs. All I gotta do is fly big stuff outside, and then I can fly the fat rigs inside. But. But. And it's a big butt. It's a big fat butt. Watch this. A big fat one coming at you. Here we go. Watch this one. Watch this. This is what you really want. You know what's about to happen. You you know it. You know what's coming. This is the Mobula 6 2024 with a couple of simple mods at 17.1 grams and a beta FPV lava battery. Watch this. Get a load of this, my friends. Oh my god, these goddamn goggles are so much nicer. Oh, fat sharks are just delightful. Oh! Oh <laughs> my god! Get over there! Let me go! Thank you. Oh, come on now. You can't tell me that you that you want to fly. What is with the video? Why is it flashing like this? Hold on. Oh my god, what a difference. Oh my god, this is so much better. Uh, this is the rig that had that weird video shit going on, didn't it? Uh, I think it was on the camera side. I think it's the, the wires going into the camera. I'm just poking them with a stick right now. That's probably going to fix it. All right. Now it's probably fine. That's how you fix analog. You poke it with a stick. <laughs> yeah, look, now it's fine. Same rates. Much cheaper, right? This rig costs less than half as much. Ow! Oh! No! No! Yeah, this is so much more fun. I'm sorry, but it is. Like, this is just, you can just do everything! It's nutty! It's just, you know, come on. This is what you want. Why do you need the better video quality? What's the point? Nobody's gonna watch your flight footage anyway. Watch, they don't watch mine. And what do you think, like, what, what's the comment that you want to get, right? Damn, you're such a good pilot, or damn, your video looks go so good. Right? You Do you want to be the star of the show, or do you want your gear to be the star of the show? Star of the show. Did you see how hard that changed direction on that fucking Matty flip? Holy Christ. Ah! Uh, what if I just like nailed that new move? Oh wait, let me try the uh, let me try the sim flick. Oh my god, I can flick it to the other side of the building. Ah! 
Get me in there. Oh! Oh my god. Oh, that was almost it, you slimy son of a bitch, you! Man, it's hard to see. It happens so quick, it's hard to even see if I'm doing it. Pretty sure I haven't done it yet, though. Oh, that's it, though. Oh, you fartbag bastard. If you're seeing Jello every once in a while, these motors are hammered ass. We did a live stream where I durability tested this rig. And, man, it took a lot of abuse. But the motors are, are uh, worse for the wear, for sure. Damn it! This is hard. This is really, really difficult. Beta FPV lava battery holding up good. Two and a half minutes. Uh, I, I just tried to force it. I tried to force it in the hole, friends. Never force it. You guys know that. One last try before the battery's done. Fuck. Lava battery, three minutes and eight seconds. It's a folded self 300 mAh, just like all the other ones. Go figure. We're going to hit that trick tonight, my friends. I hate to break it to anybody that wants to get some sleep, but uh, Teddy's Teddy's a be in bed with Azalea. Here we go. Oh, what was that? Whoa, God. Ooh, easy, easy. When the battery is full, the hover point is significantly lower. Ready? This is the one. Oh, that was almost the one. Not quite. Oh, that's it, though. That's it. That's that's the move in two phases. So I just have to line up. See what I'm doing? See how I'm lining it up here? I don't have to fly through this. I can just line it up down low. And setting this tower dive, matty flip, reverse dive nonsense from down low is a lot easier, right? So line them up. Line up the round gate and the, and the tower. Approach. And throw it. Uh, it's if if I go into it slow enough, I don't need to add an extra throttle blip to kill the forward momentum to keep it off the door, but it kind of helps to. There's just so many things to hit. There's a goddamn drum set there. There's the fucking chairs. Ah! A hard 12-inch Tom hit on that one. There you go. Ah! The dive is hard, man. There it is, you sons of bitches! <laughs> Trebek! Ooh! Fuck! That's the hard- I think that's the hardest thing that we've done down here. Oh. I was trying to do this. Oh, boy. Ooh! That was just delicious! Let's do it again. Oh, I thought we were- I thought I was gonna get it again. I was like, no way, twice in a row. No way. Ah, it's so hard to, to Maddie flip into the reverse dive thing. It's it's really hard. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that consistently. There's just so much going on. Ah, and the, the exit is hands down the hardest part. It is just so hard to get it out of there blindly in between the bass drum here and this. This is a... You jerk off. This is a really small gap right here that is uh yeah that's tough no 
And then I also have to like keep it off the ground, right? It can't hit the ground or it gets all upset. Yeah, that was uh, that was almost it, but there was like that awkward pause where I kind of it was kind of forcing it. I don't really if I'd hit that, I wouldn't have considered that clean. No. An old beat up tiny whoop folded cell 300 that ran for three minutes and ten. But if I go high KV, I'll lose all my runtime. Nope. That's right, Fat Shark Goggles. Beep. I love it when you beep. Keep beeping, and I will definitely not smash you into a thousand bits. It got that one last beep in, just as a final little fuck you. All right. How was that? Everybody happy? Good live stream? Uh, I've got to, uh, I've got to get caught up on chat. There's probably a bunch of really good chat messages up there. Let's do that. And then we will part ways for the evening. Uh, buy whatever 1002s are your best, favorite color. Next time, we're going to check out 1003s. We'll put the RC and Power 1003s up against the RC and Power 1002s. Uh, and we can also take a look at the Beta FPV 1102s on the bigger. No. What? No. These are the iFlight motors. Sorry. Beta FPV 1102s on the Meteor 75 fat ass pro frame. BLD0550 with a $2 super chat. Thank you, homie. He says, what's your go-to analog 20 by 20 VTX on a three inch quad? Uh, the, uh, not the Rush. I don't like the Rush 20 by 20s. I don't have one. Um, I have all old analog VTXs that are not sold anymore. I don't know anything about the new, boy, is that satisfying. I don't know anything about like the current generation of uh, analog VTXs, but I do know that I've had three of the Rush 20 by 20 VTXs and they've all sucked a bag of dicks. Uh, their output power is very low for what they are and they're just they're just no good. Um, so don't get those, which is crazy because the, all the other Rush VTXs seem to be totally fine. Oh boy, that's tough to do. There it is. Got it. No! Oh! Um, the RC and Power 1003s are probably going to be the best on this big fat frame. So eventually they'll end up on this. But I do want to try them on the smaller frames first. Um, even though I shouldn't. But I will. Uh... Hey, if you want to reinforce a Mobula 7 V4 frame, here's where you should put E6000. Uh, this is where I find the Mobula 7 V4 frames break eventually. They're very durable, but um, if you put some E6000 in these little spots here, that's the piece of plastic that I keep breaking on them. Uh, this piece of plastic here that holds the bottom of the battery. So just... Uh, Put a little bit of E6000 there on the parts where that connects, and it'll make it a lot stronger. There you go. Where have you guys broken your Mobula 7 V4 frames? Uh, Cold Power says, yeah, he looks like a stripper spinning tassels around. That's what I was going for. I'll be honest. I was shooting for that. Exactly. 3.8. There we go. That battery is good to sit. 4.14. I'll let that one charge up and I'll fly it tomorrow maybe. Uh, let me get caught up on Chad and then we will part ways. Look, here's where all you guys tried to help me troubleshoot and made me even angrier. Kilo Zebra says, for what it's worth, 
uh, ELRS doesn't so much choose a channel, it jumps between channels in a deterministic but unique order based on your bind phrase and packet rate settings. Good to know. Thank you, dude. Uh, Mm, Euro FPV asks a while ago, like an hour ago, have you tried or heard anything about the sub 250, 1002, 2100 uh, KV motors? Uh, I have not, and it's a little bit lower of a K. Like, I don't want to go below 22,000 is too low as it is. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, they're probably not going to make more power than these. So, I, I don't, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to spend 50, 60 more dollars. Jay Hines says, dumb question. If I upgrade my motor on a MyBlue 6 old, do I need to double check the motor rotation and beta flight? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Uh, Frank Nicholas says 78K versus 52K loaded. Thank you, dude. Uh, got that, got that. Okay, here we go. And, uh, Cold Power says, if you get a new HDMI cable, find a coiled one. They tend to uh, take a bit more flexing. Um, the problem with all these cables is the the plug. The plug does not lock into the goggles quite good enough. Th this cable's been fine, though. That was weird. I had to power cycle the walk snail. Um, that was super weird. Uh, Denzel Terrible says, I help CID if you troubleshoot because he hates it. It gives me joy. <laughs> June Lucas says, why is the video glitching? Cold Power says, both quads OSD report 46,000 uh, max ESC RPM. Parkour Guy says, my lack of experience and your experience from years are exactly why I support you to test these. Uh, I really thought the RC and power motors were God. Yeah, me too, man. I heard from so many people that I trust that the RC and power motors perform like they have a higher KV and yada, yada, yada. And then last week when I put them on and flew them, I was like, no, these are exactly the same as all the other ones. Um... But I was like, okay, you know, I haven't head-to-headed them. I'll head-to-head them next week, and here we are. Uh, it makes a lot of sense, though, that they would not be God Motors, because, yeah, you make a motor that's 1002, and then you make it 22-ish thousand KV. It's, yeah. And I'm also not convinced that there's not one company making all of these motors. And RC and Power says, hey, make our bell look like this, pink and, pink and teal. And then Flywoo says, hey, make our bell look like this, but gold and purple. And then Zing says, hey, make our bell look like this. Black. Hey, RC and Power, how about orange? You want some orange? Perfect. We were just thinking, you know what would be cool? A bright orange motor. I'm not a fan of orange. I just offended the shit out of everybody that loves orange. Parkour Guy says, would you ever test 1002s on an analog build? Uh, love to see how not having walk snail improves. Uh, I have. I've run the Flywoo 1002s on the analog Jungle Gym bashers. And as we found out tonight, the Flywoo 1002s are pretty much exactly the same as the other ones. Um, they're too heavy. The The analog builds are light enough where a 1002 is a needless amount of extra motor weight. And the KV is not high enough. On the Jungle Gym bashers... The 802 is perfect because you've got six less grams from no walk snail. So they're not going to get as hot because they're not dragging around all that extra weight. So you're going to benefit from, and, and then your, your benefit is that the motor is lighter weight. So the weight on the ends of the arms is significantly, significantly lighter. That helps the PID loop. It helps the general flight performance, the snappiness. And then 802s you can get in a higher KV. And you can actually use, if, if we could get these 1002s in 25,000, 27,000, 30,000 KV, they would rail, but nobody makes them in those higher KVs. Um, so we're limited. And so what I'm now doing, what I'm now left to do is try bigger stator sizes, the beta FPV 1102, the RCN power 1003, uh, at some point, uh, the VCI uh, 0803. Uh, I placed an order and they said, yeah, we're out of stock until the middle of May. I was like, could have told me that on the website, but I like VCI, so they get a pass. But yeah, um, I wish somebody made a higher KV 1002. 
Cole Power says, uh, did you say that the walk snail rigs are running by blades? They are. If so, uh, wouldn't you want tri blades for such a low KV? You would think so, but every single time I try the tri blades, they perform worse than the by blades. Uh, both on 1.2 inch and 1.6 inch props, there's just something magic about the gem fan by blades that they perform better, they're better balanced, and they make more thrust. Um, I've done this a bunch of times and I've tried all of the tri blades other than the Azzies because they're just way too fragile. Um, and yeah, the 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 1.6 inch by blades are God. Um, in 1.2 inch world, we've got the two brand new tri blades that are phenomenal, um, but they really don't make more power. Uh, they do. The, the, the Gemfan 1219 S's do make a little bit more power than the than the than the by blades, but not much. Uh, there's something about the tiny whoop by blades that it's. Um, I think it's just because they're light. They're they're very lightweight and and they're very efficient and they spin up and down really quick. Um, and yeah, we're running really high KV motors, so that's gonna benefit that. Um, but yeah, I've done it over and over and over again. I've tried the 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 um, 1608 tri blades from Gemfan. Those perform the best. Um, I've tried the old school. I actually have them sitting right here because I was just testing them. Here's the 1608s. Here's the 1635s from Gemfan. Um, HQ doesn't make any props, any, any tiny whoop props with a one and a half millimeter motor shaft. So can't test any of theirs. Uh, but yeah, none of the other tri blades. And, and I've also done the quad blades. They're even worse. Um, so yeah, it's super annoying. Uh, Cole Powers says, I would laugh so hard if you landed on your keyboard and it somehow fixed the stream stuttering. Layman Board says, do you know if removing a diode from a Vista, uh, if it does power on from being blown out, will it work as a fix? Do you know if, I, I don't, I, I, I know for sure that I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> I don't. I'm not totally sure of what you're asking, but I'm sure that I don't know the answer <laughs> to what you're asking. <laughs> Soap Legend says, happy early birthday. Have a good one. Thank you very much. Brandon's Big Bean says, oh, yeah. Uh, that's right. Brandon uh, has the same exact birthday as me. We're, a di we're, we're not the same age, though, right? You weren't born in 81 like I was. Were you, Brandon? That would be too weird. Cole Powers says, unleash the Ted monster. Uh, wish I could. He's upstairs sleeping or just staring at Azalea while she sleeps. Uh, June Loco says the woke snail video glitch more than <laughs> glitches more than the analog feed. That's weird, man. I don't, I, I have no idea. Uh, BLD. Uh, thank you again for the super chat. Uh, Cole Powers says, looks like a stripper spinning tassels around parkour guy says, what's the point of 10 Oh two. I don't know. Uh, seems like it's heavier and had less power. What kind of rig would you, uh, freestyle with these? I don't know. Uh, hope, uh, these weren't a wasteful purchase. Uh, we are the same age. That's weird. Um, I have heard a bunch of people say that 1002 is a worthless motor size. Um, I think that's a bit much because these rigs fly okay. I'm not happy with the way they fly, but a lot of people would be. A lot of people would be told. Look, the, uh, the Rotoriot Vision 20 is this. It's a little bit heavier because it's got a stupid 3D printed canopy. Um, but yeah, the Rotoriot Vision 20 is this. And when that thing came out, everybody went bananas. Oh my God, this is the best flying tiny whoop ever. Blah, 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 blah. So plenty of people love 1002s. Um, I just have impossible standards and I want these to fly better than they do. And I think that they can if we find... If somebody will make 1002s in a higher KV, I think that's it. I think 1002 is a motor size that is just at the moment limited by motor manufacturers not getting it and not understanding that if they just make higher KV motors, we can motor limit them in beta flight. And then it doesn't like... I get, the only thing I can think of is that they're worried that if they make a higher KV motor, it's going to burn. And then people are going to be like, oh, RC and Powers 1002s suck. Um, other than that, it's driving me insane that nobody is making a higher KV motor. All that 
being said, I think that 0803 is a better motor size. When you look at um, when you look at the current motors that we've settled on as the best motors in each particular uh, propeller size, five inch, we've got 2207s and 2306s. The ratio of height to width on those two motors is three to one and four to one. Shrink all the way, 1104, 4612, three to one, basically. 1104, I'm sorry, 1404, four, eight, 12, 16. So three and a half to one, right? Ratio of width to height, three and a half, one. Um, five inch motors, three to one, four to one. 0702 is going all the way down to a tiny, it's the smallest tiny whoop. 0702s, 2468. Three and a half to one. Three and a half to one. 1002, 246810, five to one. That's a Cinewhoop motor. These kind of fly like Cinewhoop motors. That's not the end of the world. We look at like 2004s, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, five to one, 2004 is fly great on three and a half inch props, even four inch props. Um, but the, the smaller the rig gets, the more you need to dial the motors in perfectly. So I think 1002s, A, 1002s just need higher KV. That's all there is to it. That would fix most of the problems with 1002s. But I also think that it's too wide of a motor and it's not tall of a motor. 803, it's actually, the, the VCI is actually not an 803. It's an 8026 or an 8028. Um, so let's say it's an 802 and a half, basically. Two and a half, five, seven and a half, that's basically eight. That's pretty damn close to three to one, three to one, right? That's why I'm so excited about the 803. Um, if it was an actual 803, eh, right? Three, six, nine, eight, it's, it's kind of two and a half to one. That's getting a little narrow. You don't want a motor that's too narrow and too tall because then it gets too hot. Um, so that could potentially be one of the issues with the 1002 is it's just too wide. Uh, but the big problem is 22,000 KV is not enough. We do not have, if someone was would to pr would produce a one and a half millimeter motor shaft, really lightweight, really pitchy, uh, tri-bladed prop, that would help. But that doesn't exist right now. It does with the Azis, but they just explode. Um, so I don't even test them because it's just unrealistic. If I were to, if I test them, it's like, damn, this is, the, this is it. This propeller is the greatest. All right, let me go fly them. Every time I crash, they're gonna explode, and and it's it's just like what's the, I don't even want to know. I'm pretty sure that they will be great, because I have tested them before, but I've stopped testing them because they're just unrealistic to run unless you never crash, and in that case, why even fly? Cole Power says so. What you're saying is someone needs to make an 0903 at like fifty thousand KV. Um, an 0903 at thirty thousand KV. And then we motor limit it down or let her rip. That would be it. I think that would be the one. Um, I would be totally happy, though, with a 30,000 KV 1002. That would be absolutely fine. Um, but it's not going to happen. It just isn't. Euro FPV with the last comment of the night. He says, would the 1002 be better uh, for a two-inch toothpick style? Maybe because um, different propeller options. If the this 1002 22,000 kV, if you pair it with a lightweight propeller that has a good amount of pitch, it's going to perform well. The, the problem that we're having here is that this is the only prop option and this propeller needs to be spun faster. So if you go from 1.6 inch up to 2 inch, um, that's going to help. The problem though, is that the gem fan two inch by blade propellers are pretty heavy. Um, so at two inch, there, there are some other two inch props that are interesting. I haven't paid super close attention real quick. I'm, I'm kind of curious now. I'm only going to check pyro drone cause they have a, a great propeller selection, but, uh, Look around at all of the two inch propellers. Yeah, so these Gemfin Hurricanes, this is a great propeller, but look at it. You can just see it's a big, 
thick, heavy, beefy prop. And this is a tiny little motor. Um, so that's not a great, this is gonna be a much better match. This propeller might, be, although this is really low pitch, 08 pitch. This is a 1610. This is a more pitchy 1.6 inch prop. But this is probably the propeller that you would wanna pair with the 1002. And the pitch numbers are not everything. All the rest of these props are gonna be too heavy. This is only a one millimeter motor shaft because HQ is completely out of touch with reality. Um, a, there's a one and a half uh, inch version, but it looks like the top of the propeller is closed. Again, HQ is completely out of touch with reality. Don't buy this propeller. Uh, uh, no, no, you're good, you're good. The, the, these, uh, uh, these motor shafts on these propellers are nice and short. So yeah, snag, snag a couple of sets of these. Uh, and a couple of sets of these. What, what's it say, the pitch? Uh, see, the pitch is still... Are you really not even going to tell us what the pitch is? Pitch is 1.5. There we go. Uh, yeah, these propellers might be good. Uh, these are the one. These are the best ones so far. The rest of these are way too... Uh, this is 65 millimeter. That's 2.5 inch. Uh... Yeah, no, that's it. The rest of these props are way too heavy. Um, so yeah, with either these gem fan 2008s or these HQ 51 by twos, uh, yeah, these motors would, would probably come alive a lot more. The problem is going to be a two inch rig is going to get significantly heavier than this. So you're, you're, you're going to potentially be fighting a losing war. Um, but if you can get it light enough, yeah, these motors would probably be a better match. These motors almost certainly are a better match on those propellers. Although, they might not be. Those propellers are going to be bigger, heavier, more draggy, and that might be too much for these motors. Um, we might be maxing out these motors. It's really hard to know. Like, you know, a lot of this testing I'm doing is there's not many people testing this shit. There's a bunch of people flying it, but 99% but of people, they fly this shit and they go, ah, it's so great. It's the best thing I've ever flown. As everything is the best thing they've ever flown. That's just worthless. That's just, but I get it because it's really hard to tell. It's it's it is genuinely difficult to tell the difference between this stuff. Um, and yeah, there's not many people that have been flying micros for eight plus years, <laughs> seven plus years. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, the search continues, my friends. Buy whichever 1002s you like the color of best, because they all fly the same. My name's Aaron Ciotti, and that's my pro-level advice. www.ciottifpv.com has a million ways that you can support me. The only way that I can do this, as good as I do it, is that you beautiful people support me. Um, if you have $3 a month, throw it my way over on Patreon. You will get a ton of benefits. You will love my nuts. And we will keep hanging out together. See you guys on Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Remember, 6 o'clock on Wednesday is, is when the live stream is uh, going to go up. And I expect you to be there because it's my birthday, damn it. My birthday present is you coming to the live stream and hanging out. Don't not get me anything. I'll be very upset. Here's some more flying from the. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Here's some. Uh, here's some flying from the wedding. Uh, hold on. Let me give you guys a good. Let me give you guys a good one. Hold on. This is the 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 mix of this flight footage with the song that's going to play in the outro is going to be shocking. Uh here's also a little bit of a look into like the creative process of Hey, come fly around a wedding. Um, you know, you don't get shot lists with FPV. You get 
like, hey, come out and do something cool that we can then edit in. So you gotta like, you gotta think about what the hell can I do here that an editor can actually use? Unless you don't care, if you're just in it for the paycheck, whatever, come wiggle around, but then you, you won't get hired back when that happens. So don't do that. And then people will never bring FPV on set again. And don't do that either. I'll give you guys this one. This is the first battery I flew. Be good, my friends. See you Wednesday. Dirt, 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 dirt. Come on. There we go. Uh, so the first thing you're going to see is uh, a, a, an idea that I had of like showing these pictures that they had up, but the uh, the reflections on the pictures, you'll see. There was just no reason, and I just scrapped it and said to hell with it. Um, but yeah, there you go. Love you, bye! <laughs>